All right, everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Today, we're going to be looking at something uh, pretty interesting uh, that I think is going to hit home for a lot of us. Um, and it has to do with plastics and something in plastics that could be damaging our DNA. Yeah, this is some pretty uh, concerning research that came out of Harvard, and it's about a chemical called BBP, benzyl butyl phthalate, which is in a lot of our everyday plastics, you know, to make them flexible. Oh, okay. Like your water bottles. And, I see. You know, yeah, okay. Children's toys and things like that. Oh, so like the bendy soft plastics? That's, yeah. that's what this is. That's what BBP is. Okay, so what did they find in this research? What's so concerning about it? Well, they used roundworms as a model organism because, hmm. believe it or not, they metabolize BBP similarly to humans. And they found that even at levels that we commonly encounter, it was causing DNA strand breaks in the reproductive cells of these roundworms. Wait, so broken DNA? Yeah. that's That sounds pretty serious. It is, yeah. What are the implications of that? Well, the implications are pretty significant. Um, you know, we're talking about chromosomal abnormalities. Uh, which can lead to difficulties conceiving, miscarriages, even birth defects. Wow. So this is not something to take lightly. Okay, so they saw this in roundworms. But, like, how does that translate to humans? I mean, are we roundworms? That's the question, right. Um, but the reason they use roundworms is because they have similar metabolic pathways to humans. So it suggests that these findings could be relevant to us. Okay, so it's not just something we can ignore and be like, Oh, it's just worms. This could actually be happening in us. Exactly. Okay, so what exactly did they do in this study? So they exposed these roundworms to varying levels of BBP, including levels comparable to what's been found in human blood and urine. And they compared their response to a control group that wasn't exposed. So they weren't just like blasting them with BBP. It was like levels we would normally see. So real world levels. Okay. And they looked specifically at the reproductive cells because that's where DNA damage would have the most significant impact. I see. They even used high tech imaging to actually see the broken chromosome. Oh, wow. So they could actually see the damage. It wasn't just a theory. They had like Ew. visual proof. Okay. And they found that the roundworms exposed to BBP had significantly more DNA breaks and abnormalities in their egg cells compared to the control group. Okay, so how does it actually do that, though? Like, how? What's the uh, mechanism? Well, they observed that BBP exposure increased oxidative stress in the worms. Um, so, basically, it seems to trigger an imbalance in cells that can harm DNA. So, it's like BBP exposure leads to oxidative stress, yeah. which leads to DNA damage. Yeah. And in this case, it was the egg cells, which... Yeah. You know, that's a pretty big deal when we're talking about fertility yeah, right. and, you know, even birth defects. Yeah. And it makes you wonder, you know, this study focused on egg cells, bro. What other impacts might BBP have on different types of cells in the body? Yeah. I mean, could we be seeing similar damage in other organs or systems? It's a question that needs further investigation for sure. Yeah. Okay. So this is... uh This is pretty heavy stuff. I think some of our listeners are probably now thinking, okay, where is this BBP? You know, should I be throwing out all my plastics? Like, what can we do with this information? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think it's important to remember that it's not about panicking and throwing everything away. It's about being aware and making informed choices. Okay. So what are some practical things we can do to minimize our exposure? Well, for starters, think about where BBP is most prevalent. Food packaging containers are a big one. Right. Yeah, I already put my water bottle down. So yeah. switching to glass or stainless steel. For food storage exactly. is a good first step. Absolutely. Okay. And be mindful of those flimsy plastic containers for leftovers. Heating them up can actually increase the leaching of chemicals like BBP into your food. Well, okay. So glass containers and maybe not microwaving in plastic. What else? Um, think about your kids' toys. Those soft, bendy toys are often loaded with phthalates like BBP. So opt for toys made from natural materials like wood or cloth. Yeah. Whenever possible. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that a lot of baby toys especially are. Yeah. That's soft plastic. Yeah. So I have to keep that in mind. Okay, so food storage, toys, what else? And don't forget about personal care products. BBP can lurk in things like lotions, shampoos, and even nail polish. Wait, nail polish? Yeah. Seriously? It's often used to make it more flexible and chip resistant. So look for brands that are phthalate-free. Wow. Okay, this is really eye-opening. I never realized how pervasive this stuff is. So we've got food storage, toys, personal care products. Is there anything else we should be aware of? Anything that has that soft, pliable plastic is suspect. Think shower curtains, vinyl flooring, even some clothing. 
Okay, so that's that's a lot. It feels a bit overwhelming. I don't know about you, but I'm like... I'm trying to think of everything. I hear you. It can feel that way. But, yeah. you know, just remember that small changes can make a big difference. You don't have to overhaul your entire life overnight. Just start by making a few swaps here and there. That's a good point. It's yeah, about but... progress, not perfection. Right. Exactly. And it's not just about individual choices either. We can also push for systemic change by supporting policies that restrict the use of harmful chemicals like BBP. All right, because at the end of the day, it shouldn't be solely up to consumers. To have to navigate all of this, we need better regulations to protect public health. Absolutely. But until those regulations catch up, being informed consumers is crucial. The more we know about these chemicals, the better choices we can make for ourselves and our families. So knowledge is power. And speaking of knowledge, this study focused on BBP. But I have to wonder, are there other chemicals in plastics that we should be worried about? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? BBP is just one of many potentially harmful chemicals lurking in our environment. There's a whole class of chemicals called phthalates, and many of them have been linked to various health concerns. So BBP is just the tip of the iceberg. It seems that way. But don't despair. There are also a lot of brilliant scientists and researchers out there who are working hard to identify these hazards and develop safer alternatives. That's reassuring to hear. So while this deep dive has definitely revealed some unsettling information, it's also a call to action. We can make informed choices as consumers, advocate for better regulations, and support the research that's paving the way for a healthier future. Well said. It's not about living in fear but about empowering ourselves with knowledge and taking action to create a safer world. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. But before we do, I want to leave our listeners with one final thought. Yeah, it's not about, you know, like I said, throwing everything out, just being more aware. Okay, so what are some practical things we can do to minimize our exposure? Well, I think, you know, for starters, like we were talking about, food packaging, containers, that's a big one. Right. Yeah, I already put down my water bottle. So switching to glass or stainless steel. Yeah, that's a great For food storage. Absolutely. Okay. And then also being mindful of those flimsy plastic containers, you know, Hmm. that you might use for leftovers and things like that. Heating those up can actually increase the leaching of the chemicals, like BBP, into your food. (sighs) Okay, so glass containers... And maybe not microwaving in plastic. Yeah, try to avoid that. Okay, what else? Um, Think about your kids' toys, you know? Those soft, bendy toys are often loaded with phthalates, like BBP. So looking for toys made from natural materials, like wood or cloth whenever possible, is a good idea. Okay, yeah, I've definitely noticed that with a lot of baby toys especially. Like, a lot of them are that soft plastic. Yeah. So I have to keep that in mind. Definitely. So food storage, toys... Anything else. And don't forget about personal care products. BBP can be in things like lotions, shampoos, even nail polish. Wait, nail polish? Yeah. Seriously. It's often used to make it more flexible and chip resistant. I had no idea. So looking for brands that are phthalate free. Okay. Wow, this is really eye opening. I never realized how much this stuff was in. Uh, like every so we've got food storage, toys, personal care products, anything else we should be aware of. Anything that has that soft, pliable plastic. Shower curtains, vinyl flooring, even some clothing. Oh, wow. So that's that's a lot. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, to be honest, like just, just trying to think about everything. I hear you. It can feel that way. But remember that, you know, small changes can make a big difference. You don't have to overhaul your entire life overnight. Just start by making a few swaps here and there. That's a good point. Progress, not perfection. Right. Exactly. And it's not just about like the individual choices either, right? Yeah. We can also be supporting policies that restrict the use of these chemicals. Absolutely. That's really important. Because at the end of the day, it shouldn't be up to us as consumers to have to like navigate all of this. We need better regulations to protect public health. I completely agree. But until those regulations catch up, you know, being informed consumers is so important. The more we know about these chemicals, the better choices we can make for ourselves and our families. So knowledge is power. Yeah. This study focused on BBP. But I have to wonder, are there other chemicals in plastics that we should be concerned about? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question, right? BBP is just one of many potentially harmful chemicals that are out there, you know, in our everyday products. There's a whole class of chemicals called phthalates, and many of them have been linked to various health issues. So BBP is just the tip of the iceberg. It seems that way. Why? But, you know, don't despair. There are also a lot of brilliant scientists and researchers 
who are working hard to identify these hazards and develop safer alternatives. That's good. That's reassuring. So it seems like this deep dive has uncovered some, some pretty unsettling information. But it's also a call to action, right? We can make informed choices. We can advocate for better regulations. And we can support the research yeah, absolutely. that's being done to create a healthier future. Well said. It's not about living in fear, but about empowering ourselves with knowledge and taking action yeah, to create a safer world. All right. Well, on that note, I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. But before we do, I want to leave our listeners with one final thought. This study focused on egg cells, but what other impacts might BBP have on the body? That's a really good question. And, you know, it's something that requires more research, but there are some studies that suggest it could potentially impact other things too, like oh. uh, metabolic disruption, maybe even certain types of cancers. So this isn't just about reproductive health. It could be even broader than that. Yeah, exactly. Right. We might just be seeing the tip of the iceberg here. And that's why it's so important to yeah. continue to research and look into this. Yeah. I like to think of it as like peeling back the layers of an onion. With each new discovery, we uncover another layer, another question. That's a great analogy. And it really highlights how important it is, you know, for us to stay informed, to follow the science. Because what we know today might be completely different from what we know tomorrow. Well, this has definitely been a really fascinating deep dive. And it's been pretty eye-opening, a little bit unsettling in some ways. Yeah. But I also feel empowered knowing that I can make choices to reduce my exposure. That's the key, right? It's not about living in fear. It's about taking control of your health, what? making informed decisions. Absolutely. And advocating for change. All right. Well, I think that about wraps up our deep dive into BBP and the potential impact it has on our health. It's been a pleasure. It has. And to all of our listeners, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you found this deep dive interesting and informative. And until next time, stay curious and stay well-informed.